Habakkuk answers this question. Will evil ever be judged? Is God ever going to do something about all the horrible things that are going on in this world? Is he ever going to do it? The answer, in Habakkuk. In Habakkuk chapter uh, 1, verse 2, the Bible says, Oh Lord, how long will I cry for help and you don't hear? We cry, violence, there's violence everywhere, God, and you do nothing. Verse 3, why do you make me see iniquity and why do you look idly at wrong? You don't care. Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. It's like everywhere there's fighting and people being rude and horrible to other people and you don't even care. The law is paralyzed in verse 4. In other words, uh, everything is corrupt. Hmm. Sounds like our society, doesn't it? Justice never goes forth. The wicked surround the righteous. Justice is perverted. Political crimes, bribes. Then God answers in verse 5. I am doing a work in your days that if you knew, you wouldn't believe it. Behold, I am bringing the Chaldeans. And they're going to march against you and they're going to totally destroy you. In verse 12, Habakkuk is like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I wanted you to judge evil, but I wasn't expecting all of us to, you know, be judged. And God's like, no, no, no. I, I'm taking care of this. You think I don't see it? And Habakkuk says, but in verse 13, you are of purer eyes. You can't look at wrong. You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't let ISIS, like, judge America. I mean, yeah, we got some things going on here that aren't so good. I mentioned them before, but they're even worse. And God says, I know. I'll take care of them too. In chapter 2, verse 4, you get to the conclusion of how we really ought to live. Instead of asking the question, will you ever judge evil? Will you ever do something about the crimes that are out there? The answer is, of course, yes. Nobody gets away with anything with God. God sees it all. No one ever gets ahead with evil. God's on the throne. In verse 4, he says, the righteous will live by faith. That's it. Righteous people trust that God is on the throne. God is in control. God will judge evil. And you trust in His timing. It's about God's time, not my time. You trust in His judgment. He will mete out the proper punishment for whatever's been done. Truth is, you and I don't really see what's being done behind closed doors. God sees everything. And he holds the entire world in his hand. And nothing escapes his glance. And so, the just will live by faith. It's repeated four times in the Bible. And it's the way you live. If you're a righteous person, you live by faith. You trust that God is not going to let anything happen that is evil without judging it. Now, as soon as you want to judge evil and you say, man, listen, I just wish I'd wake up tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning and God would just judge all evil. Well, guess what? If God did that, you wouldn't be watching Good Morning America either. Okay? If God were to judge all evil, that'd be me and you and everyone else. So we're grateful for God's mercy, giving us time to repent. But those folks that don't and do these things that maybe we're pointing to and saying, is there ever going to be a judgment day? The answer is there will be a day that every man will stand before God and have to answer for every word that was spoken, every deed that was done. God's written it down in a book, and it's all been recorded. And this is why we thank God for another book, a greater book, the Lamb's Book of Life, the book of those whose names have been written down and your name being the book of life means that all your sin, all your guilt was blotted out. If you can trust in God for that, you can trust in God for anything you're going to face today. The just will live by faith.